Hello Floss Tube friends and welcome. I am Lisa and this is my channel Cross by Floss where I talk about my love of cross stitch and all things cross stitch as well as life blabbings because that's what I do. <laughs> so if you are a new viewer, welcome, a very special welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, also thank you for coming and joining me. Um, I know that there are so many YouTubers to, to watch, um, and man alive, have there been some great videos recently. Now I'm going to be real honest. And in the last couple of weeks, I have not watched a lot of videos, floss tube videos, um, because, uh, well, I've been working kind of late. Uh, I'll talk about that in a little while, but also I got uh, involved in a show on Hulu called Virgin River and there's three seasons and I've been binge watching the three seasons so um, I've gotten little to next to nothing in stitching done really as well as watching some floss tube however the floss tube that I have watched have been like mid-year whip parades fantastic as well as um, I watched a sewing room tour which I'm going to talk about a little bit later and um, and then I also watched ooh, some recaps of um, StitchCon which a little sad because I was on the list and I had to take myself off the list because the little and uh, she was still doing remote learning and there was just no way that that I would be able to, to take that amount of time off to be able to, as well as my daughter, be able to take that time off. Um, so yeah, so hopefully next year though, because man alive, the videos that I've seen, it looks like so much fun um, for StitchCon recap, plus um, the videos that Stephanie and Pam have done, Pam and Stephanie have done from Just Keep Stitching have been fantastic. So a little jealous, a little jealous. All right. So what has happened? Um, I think I'm going to have like this new, this new series in my videos called Lisa learns leaves <laughs> about my, my plant fetish. You guys, I can't stop buying plants. In fact, the other day I was like, maybe I should put myself on a plant diet. And then I laughed and then I laughed a lot because I'm like that's not gonna happen and then I brought home two more but um I think in my last video I told you guys I had gone to Lowe's and I found like a bunch of um half price plants like they were discounting the plants because you know they overwater them at Lowe's or um you know they needed a little help they hadn't been watered enough it's either they get overwatered or underwatered there doesn't seem to be any um middle ground and uh, so the plants needed help. Well, I brought a few home. I've had to repot a couple. I've had to clip back a whole bunch. In fact, I'm praying that it comes back. Really, I'm praying that two of them come back, honestly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't pay a whole lot for them if they don't, and it's kind of a learning lesson. So if I'm able to find them again, then it'll be fine. It was, it's a learning lesson, <laughs> but, um, I got a lot of plants. I went back to Lowe's and bought some more. Yes, I did. I ended up bought a couple of succulents and actually I just had to throw one of the succulents away today. It got root rot and there was no saving it. I mean, I just, there was no way it, everything fell off on the top. And when I, tried you know because I was going to um clean off the soil and replant it it was all mush so um unfortunately that was also a little bit of a learning lesson but whatever um but what happened to me so the plants are still all alive except for the ones that I bought which were not my fault on dying so see they're still my friends I told you I can't kill friends I did not technically kill them, Lowe's killed them. I just tried to bring them home to revive them and it didn't work out. <laughs> Anywho, um, I'm in the middle of a meeting with my boss 
And behind me, I hear one of the plants drop. And I'm like, because <gasps> I'm thinking, man, did Odin's tail? Odin wasn't anywhere near it. And it was the Mother of Thousands, which I've had to put up real high because Mother of Thousands is quite poisonous. Actually, quite a few of my plants are poisonous. And technically, he leaves them all alone. He just likes the smell of the wet soil. But he doesn't eat anything. He doesn't, he doesn't, you know. And I pick up everything that drops. And so, because um, I do the 10-minute tidy around the house every morning to see what plants need water and whatever. Anywho, uh, my mother of thousands fell, you guys, because she'd gotten so tall and lopsided in her pot. She came off. Well, all her baby plantlets came off too. She naked. She has no babies. My mother of thousands is, she has no babies. So I repotted her in the wrong soil. So that needs to be fixed. And then I, um, I staked her. So I'm hoping that she'll grow her babies back and that this will work, but I do have to repot her in proper soil because I don't know what I was thinking. I actually did a whole bunch of plants one day. I repotted a bunch of plants. Um, and when I repotted her, I, I forgot that she is a succulent-ish kind of plant and that she should have been in cactus soil. And I didn't put her in cactus soil. So, anywho, yeah. So that, that happened, lots, lots of new plants. And then, yeah, a couple that didn't make it. Again, not my fault, not my fault. Um, and then Mr. G came home last week, so I didn't put up a video for Sunday because he was home. Nothing exciting has really been happening um, other than I've been doing a lot of work uh, late, late at night, mostly because I am able to spend the day with my granddaughter and because uh, it's summertime. And so uh, I'm working a little later at night in order to accommodate my hours. And so therefore I'm not getting any stitching done either, which has been a problem. And then on Friday, my oldest son and I went and got our second COVID shots. And I tell you what, Friday and Saturday, down. Oh my goodness, down. Um, neither one of us felt good. And I pretty much slept all day Saturday. I didn't do much. I did stain a couple, or uh, chalk painted a couple of things um, earlier in the morning when I was sort of feeling well. But uh, I crashed oh, hard, 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 hard. And it's late at night. It's not late at night. It is six o'clock in the evening now. And that is not normally when I do my videos. I do them early in the morning. And, um, but I could not get motivated today at all. I still wasn't feeling all that great, but kind of getting back. And of course the ear infection is back. Yep, I don't know why, but anyway, it is what it is. Anyway, I think that that is pretty much it for the life blabbings. So how about we get into cross stitch, <laughs> which is probably why you're here. Um, okay, so while I did not do a whole lot, I did get a little bit more done on Reflections of, of Canada by Ink Circles. And this is my focus piece, though I have not been focusing very well on it the last little while. So, but I did get, well, let's put this back here. So... I think the last time you saw it, I had this done. So I have finished all of this in here. And um, man, it is, it's looking good. It is looking good. I don't think I'm gonna make my goal of the end of July at this point, which is totally fine because Canada Day is done. And, but it will definitely be done by next Canada Day. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> it's the focus piece. So it should, it should get done. And uh, so now I'm kind of working towards end of August, I'm hoping. <sighs> we'll see. Okay, the next piece I worked on was one of my Whipco pieces. And this was Frankenstein. And it is, it is by um, Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts on Etsy. And she is... 
Stitch and Book Club on Etsy, I believe. I'm sorry, on Instagram. Which one did I say? Uh, Stitch and Book Club. Stitching Book Club on Instagram and um, Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts on Etsy. So uh, this was Frankenstein and this was a sal from last year. <laughs> And so I got, I did not, I did do a little bit. So all this in here, I believe, is what I've gotten done so far. So I need to spend a couple more hours to get my 10, 10 hour goal in for the month. And then I'll move on to my second whip piece, which is Anne Morrison, I believe. And then I am doing Mira monday stitching that is the hashtag on instagram and so every monday i pick up a mira that is either um, already a whip in my stash or um a new mira which will happen in the next little while uh, but right now i'm kind of concentrating on ones that are in my whips just because i want to see a little bit of progress come through on them so the first one that i did a couple of mondays ago that you haven't seen is Enchanted Mermaid. At least I don't think you've seen this. And, oh, this is where I am on her. She's so pretty. She is so pretty. Okay. So I continued on with her hair, her headdress, and a little bit of her skin started. So that's what I got done on her. And this is just done on a 16 count Ada. I believe it is in the color uh, Twilight Blue, I believe. She's a lovely stitch. She'll come out again, I'm sure. Um, because I just, well, I love her. She's just like the most regal um, mermaid. She's just so pretty. She's, yeah, she's all that. And then uh, this past Monday, I pulled out Archangel. And I just, I love Archangel so much. So that's what he looks like. He's so pretty. And I am doing this on a 16 count um, touch of gray. Whatever this called, touch of gray. No, just O gray. Um, and actually, it's an 18 count Ada. I lied. And it is uh, fabrics by LJ, who is no longer selling pieces. But look at how much I've gotten done. Oh my goodness. So I started in a little bit of the skin, I got a little bit more of the robe in, and then. Um, I, which I posted on Instagram for the hashtag Mira Monday stitching, but then I added this teal in the robe as well. And you know, when I first put it in, okay, and I, I made a boo-boo too. So when I was stitching it, <laughs> counting, counting is a, is a good thing. So uh, this little part here, I had way down here because these, how I had my working copy folded, it looked like it was supposed to go here. So when I started, you know, stitching these, they weren't matching up to where this neck stitches were supposed to be. And I'm like, mm, that doesn't seem right. What did I do? So I had to frog out that whole entire area and start again, but it's okay. I was also super tired and probably should not have been stitching. Okay, you guys, honest to Pete, that is all the stitching I've gotten done. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. But um, tomorrow is Monday and I will have a new Mira. Not a new Mira. I'll be working on one of my whip Miras. I'm not sure which one yet. Um... I'm not sure which one yet. I might, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. 
Um, I think I'll just pull them all out, spread them out, and decide which one to work on tomorrow morning. So, um, but if you would like to join in for Near Monday Stitching, uh, I will be doing it until the end of time, I'm sure, because I have a lot of mirrors. Um, but I need a little bit of motivation and this works. Uh, every Monday I look forward to stitching and it's just that day and I get a little bit in and I see a little bit of progress and it uh, makes me happy. So, and it makes me happy that you guys are joining in as well. So, um, that's, that's pretty fun. All right. Uh, let's get into haul, a little bit of haul. So the, um, uh, who is this? Fat Quarter Shop, um, a Floss Frenzy for Wheat's Dye Works came for June and it is all the purples. So there's some pretty, pretty, pretty purples that came and, um, they're all lovely. They're so lovely. Like, look at the variegation in this one. Do you see that? Oh, so pretty. They're gorgeous. -o. So that was fun. And then um, I don't get on Facebook very often, but I was joining a new group, a mirror group, of course. And um, and so I was like, mm, let me go and see what's in Stash Unload. So uh, somebody was selling one of the uh, most suitable name series, Alphabet Annie from Jeanette Dub Douglas. And this was one that I am missing. Now I think I need two more. And then I think I have the whole set. So I'm excited about that, but she's so cute. Yep, Alphabet Annie. So I got that. And then um, while I was on Facebook at the same time, uh, I saw a post from Garon, Gary, Gary, uh, from Garon Stitchery or Garon Toten Bags, depending on how you follow them. And he, Ronnie had made a post that there were still some state bags on their, their store. So I was like, how did I miss a sale? First of all. And second of all, um, hello. So I went onto the site. Well, they had a Washington bag. They had a Washington bag left. I know there's lots of stitchers in Washington, so um, y'all missed out because <laughs> I got a Washington bag. I was so happy. And this is their original big size, which also makes me happy. But look at how pretty this is. And then the inside fabric with all of this, the, um, uh, mo not monuments, but um, famous areas around here, like Olympic National Park. Is it Olympic National Park? I didn't grow up here. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's called the Evergreen State, Snoqualmie Falls, Pioneer Square. Yeah, Olympic National Park. See? Not that silly. Uh, Mount St. Helens, all that. So the wording inside for the state. And then how beautiful. How beautiful is this bag? I mean, it's beautiful. And the cup of coffee. I don't see Rainier beer on here, though. Hmm. Yeah. And um, while, oh, sorry. While I was buying things on their webs or buying that bag, I also went and got the bead pack for Ophelia and the bead pack for Twisted Mermaids. So I figured if I was buying a bag, let's add to my add to my order. So that was fun. And you know, their shipping is incredibly fast, like incredibly fast. And then this is the fault of Memphis Sarah on Floss Tube. She was doing her, um, it was in the video, uh, I think she called it the Mirabilia incident, I think it was. And she showed a couple of kits, Mirabilia kits. And I've known that these have existed, but I'm like, oh, I'm not buying the kit because it's got linen in it. I don't work on linen, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, okay, but this is the only way I'm going to get the pattern. So I guess I'm going to get the kit. 
So then I started looking for, she showed uh, Thanksgiving Fairy. And that's the whole incident that she was talking about, the Mirabilia incident. And um, and so when she showed it, I was like, mm, I must have that. So when I was at my LNS, I had asked a niece whether or not she could get that um, kit. And she, it was not, it wasn't available. Uh, she thinks because uh, um, supplies are hard to get right now. And so in order to get it kitted up, you'd have to have the colors because it's classic color works. Is that right? Yes, classic color works is what they um, kit the, the kits up with and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, but while Denise was telling me, no, she wasn't able to get that one, but she could get some of the other ones that I was interested in. There was a lady in there who, for the life of me, I can't remember her name, but she was uber knowledgeable and she said, oh, well, I know somebody who might be able to get you that kit. So if you give me your name and number, you know, blah, blah, I will, you know, pass that along and whatever. So one day I'm sitting at work outside on my deck working. I was working and uh, this wonderful lady called and she said, I hear that you're looking for this kit um, and I have one available. And I'm like, you do? <laughs> so I got me Thanksgiving Harvest Fairy. I was just going to call her Thanksgiving Fairy. I knew that was wrong. So a Thanksgiving Harvest Fairy. How beautiful is she? She is all kitted up beautiful, gorgeous colors, all my colors, all my colors. So thank you, Memphis Sarah, because now I'm down the rabbit hole of more kits. So why buy one when you can buy two? So I also got Miss New Year's Eve Fairy. And she's also very, very pretty. And I have seen her a couple of times. She's kitted with the crinic, the beads, the floss, the linen, which of course I won't use. And um, this one does not have crinic. Oh, thank you. Oh, mm, did I speak too soon? No, she has no crinic. That's so fantastic. Nope, just beads. I like her more and more. So thank you for enabling Memphis Sarah. Um, that was fantastic. Then, he. <laughs> I bought more scissors off of Amazon. Mm -hmm. I know Kim, maybe look away. <laughs> so uh, Ginger, is that right? Ginger scissors. I got this cute pair. So dainty and then the stork ones. So pretty. So that's what I, I bought there. And then um, back to my plant fetish. So. I have a problem with um, fungus gnats, and most of my fungus gnats actually come from my Trader Joe's uh, plants. I do get some from the Home Depot plants, but not as many as I do from my Trader Joe's plants. And I know a couple of my subscribers have said they don't have any problems with their Trader Joe's plants, and I don't know what you guys are doing, but um, I have a lot of fungus gnats on my Trader Joe plants, and I mosquito bit, you know, uh, water them and um, do all the things you're supposed to. Well, then somebody told me, get some of that sticky fly paper or fungus nap paper or whatever they call it. And so I bought these off of Amazon too. It's Yoda, Yoda. <laughs> I bought the original ones that are flower shape and a duck and something else. But then as I, you know, I got those already and all 24 are in 24 different plants. And I got to tell you the fungus gnats that I'm seeing on there. I'm like, eh, that's so not, so not okay. But then when I was like, okay, I'm obviously going to need more because I have more than 24 plants. Um, I'm going to need more. And so I'm surfing and I found Yoda. Yoda, he's so cute. And then, so these ones came and then um, it came in a 50 pack, 50, mm -hmm. for like $13 I wanna say. And um, they're, they're great because you shove them down into the pot, right? 
and then you peel up. I, I've been seeing people who are like, it's horrible trying to take the paper off because you get your finger sticky and whatever. No, you don't. No, I, I mean, I've not had that problem. You put this down in the pot first and then you peel off the sticky on either side. It's very easy. They give you a little hoo-hoo thingy to, a little tabby thing to, to do that with. And so I haven't, I have never had to touch the sticky. So, um, but sadly I have more than 24 plus 50 plants, which is what, 74 plants? I have more than that. So I had to buy some more and I got Pikachu. Pikachu's coming. I know, I, we're a bit nerdy at this household, a little bit nerdy. And then, so that's, I, I think, honestly, that's it for my haul, too. Eh, no. Mm, I'm going to talk about this in a second. Then I was thrifting because I've been looking for a lot of milk glass recently. And I've been looking for some vintage pieces that I'm chalk painting for my basement. And I don't want everything to match, but I, I want it to be in the same line-ish um, but they'll all be chalk painted the same color, so it's still going to be cohesive, but I don't need each piece to be the exact, like coming from Victorian or um, have ornate legs on each one or whatever the case is, right? Anywho, um, when I go, I, I do the loop. Mr. G is like, this is incredible. I'm like, we're just going in, we're looking at the frames, then we go and we have a look at the pots, plant pots, and then we go to magazines and then we go to the craft area and then we leave because, well, okay, I also look in the furniture. So depending because Goodwill doesn't have a whole bunch of furniture, Value Village does. So at least here and um, or in my area because Goodwill won't take furniture, a whole bunch of furniture, but Good uh, Value Village will. Anyway, um... So yes, I, I do the loop. And um, and so, you know, in and out kind of most of the time. And I was in my Valley Village just a couple of nights ago. And I found my very first Duchess Oval hoop. It's in pretty good condition. It's got a little bit of missing felt here. But I don't think that that is going to a problem I hope um anyways it had no price on it so it had a price it has a tag but it did not have a price so I went on up and I said to the nice little young man and it even had something stapled on it at some point somebody took it off and um and it was not me I don't do that and um so anyways I went on up to the front desk and he was kind of new and so he said to the lady who was at the front with the carts, who actually was the manager, and she goes, $1.99. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. She goes, yeah, no price. It's $1.99. Cheaper than you get it at Michael's. And I'm like, <laughs> you wouldn't get this at Michael's, but okay. Um, but funny story about these. Okay, so I have seen these over the years of my cross-stitching, and I always thought that there was something wrong with them. I didn't realize that these were special hoops. I thought that there was something wrong with them because they didn't have the, the little, you know, claspy thing and tighten and hoopy thing. I hope, like I hope. And so when I saw this, I, I've passed these up for years and like seen them all over the place and passed them up. Because I thought that they were, I thought that there was something wrong with them. Well, then, thanks to Floss Tube, I found out that these actually are like really awesome. And when they've got the stamp on them, Duchess Oval or whatever, um, and now I'm looking for the princess ones. So, yeah, $1.99, you guys. Okay, then. Um, I don't have a, a spotlight on the stitcher today because, uh, again, like I said, I haven't really been able to watch a whole lot of floss tube the last couple of weeks. And, um, and I like to watch and binge watch new, sorry, the light is like coming in. 
um, new stitchers and and really kind of give a, a thing about them. But I wasn't able to do this this time. And so um, I'm going to talk about one that I actually shouted out quite a long time ago, like when they were fairly new. And that is Kara Lee from Stitching is Elementary, which I always thought was very clever because she's an elementary teacher. And, um, but one of her latest videos is she did a sewing room tour and I loved her sewing room tour. And uh, one of the things that she did, I'm gonna get it here. One of the things that she did was she, I mean, she went through everything in her craft room. It was fantastic. Her organization makes my heart just pitter patter a little faster because mm, I love the organization. I love it. And um, my problem is, is I find like a little something here and a little something there and like none of my stuff actually like Mm, is cohesive like the way hers is you know she went to Target and obviously bought like 150 bins of the same thing and so I'm exaggerating she bought a lot though but all the same all the same color all the same size all the same like everything that she needed right and then put her stuff in well I don't do that I'm like Mm, I'll just buy a couple here and then, you know, I'll go back and I'll be like, mm, I really like those ones. Well, they don't sell them anymore. So then, I, oh, okay, well, I'll get, you know, something that looks, yeah. So none of my stuff is um, cohesive the way that I would like. But anyway, um, but one of the things that she did, which I thought was brilliant, was she took these bags. Now I've showed these bags before, but not with the pocket. These are new to me with the pocket on the front. And, um, and so you can label what, what, uh, is inside the bag. Um, but the clear, the clear envelope type bags with the zipper. And then, like I said, the pocket on the front. And then she bought these bins from Target and she put the bags in there. And then uh, she put the designers, so like all of Jeanette Douglas, all of um, Plum Street samplers, all of um, Blackbird, you know, like whatever, several, several bags of Blackbird because buy all Blackbird and, um, you know, Mirabilia is that kind of thing. And I'm like, okay, that is brilliant because I currently have mine all in one of those great big um, boxes, this beautiful box from like Joann's or whatever, you know, those big, um, not a hat box, but you know what I mean, um, that you lift the lid and super pretty, uh, but they're all in there. So if I want to go and find a pattern, I have to dig through the whole dang thing in order to be able to find what I'm looking for. And, um, and I was like, okay, that, that is super de smart. So I promptly stopped her video and um, purchased the bags off of Amazon. And then I went to Target and sadly, the three Targets I went to only had this one in the clear that I wanted, um, but it's perfect for myself. And then I'm just gonna start organizing my bags and putting the designers either by designer or by season. It depends on, no, nah, probably by designer just because I have the cross stitch app and then uh, I put all of my stuff on the cross stitch app and, um, and then I can just go to the name of the pattern and see. So I will probably do that. There will be some things that won't go in bags, like my mirrors. They'll stay in the basket that they're in. Um, my Blackbird designs, they'll stay in the magazine uh, uh, boxes that they're in because I have too many of them. And um, the same with my Plum Streets, I just have too many. And so there are certain things that will stay uh, the way that they're organized, but everything that's in those boxes, like the Little House Needleworks and Cottage, country cottage no stop stop talking Lisa <laughs> all those designers um you know my my uh 
Lizzie Case, those kinds of things. They'll all end up in these kinds of bags because that that was brilliant. And then I went one step further and uh, I think I mentioned that I took my Ikea uh, case that I had. It's just a, it's actually quite old. Probably had it for 20 some odd years. Uh, Ikea um, shelf that is only six inches deep. Um, and so I was having a really hard time finding something for, for that to put boxes in and Target had those too. And these fit perfect. Well, my original idea was I was going to put all of my flosses, my DMC flosses that I have by bag, by number, um, like that. And this is how I store my my DMCs. But unfortunately, uh, I have too much floss for the, the things. And this is like a double row. And I'm afraid that they'll kind of shift into each other a little bit. And so this is, this is not how I'm going to store my DMC. I'm going to go back to the cabinet that they were in to begin with. But... All of my um, color and cotton and um, something else, I forgot. But they will go, they'll just go in here and lay down in here on rings. And then I can just pull them up and, and see what I need. Um, instead of the box back there that they are currently in, in their bags. Because I haven't organized any of that. So... Um, I thought that that was great and these worked perfect and they go perfectly, they fit perfectly in the shelf um, from Ikea and they're not super intrusive and I still have some shelf space to be able to um, add cross stitch items in there in the future. So that was pretty cool. Um, okay, uh, so now for the special thing. Um, which I think I forgot to tell you about in the beginning. So if you stayed this long, I have something special. So a few weeks ago, I showed this pattern, um, O Canada by Kitty and Me Designs, which is Pamela Kellogg is the designer of Kitty and Me Designs or Kitty Me. Yeah, Kitty Me Designs. And I got this pattern off of one, two, three stitch because my son likes owls we are canadian and i just thought that this was this is just really beautiful and so pamela reached out to me and um she is giving three of my viewers the opportunity to receive a pdf chart from her etsy shop which is kitty me designs and i'm gonna link that down below um, when she reached out to me, I went on to her Etsy shop because I, I didn't realize she had an Etsy shop and I don't, I didn't take this out of the package to look at the pattern or anything. And so, uh, she may have her Etsy shop in here. I don't know. But when she reached out to me and said that she had an Etsy store, I was like, Oh, so I went and had a look. You guys, there are so many patterns on there. <laughs> that I am going to get because, wow, they are super cute. Um, and so anyways, uh, if you would like to be in the drawing to receive a PDF chart from Pamela Kellogg of Kitty Me Designs, uh, leave a comment, let's say Kitty, K-I-T-T-Y, Kitty. And, um, and then I will do the random generator picker thing and three lucky viewers will contact Pamela and you can choose a pattern from her Etsy shop and she will then, um, email that to you. So not only a great big thank you to Pamela for reaching out. I've never had a designer reach out before. It was so exciting. I was so excited. Um, and for giving three of my viewers an opportunity to, receive one of your beautiful charts because they really and truly are quite spectacular. So, all right, you guys, I think that that is all. Oh, and I will do that drawing in two weeks time, um, at my regular next video. And, um, and then we'll let Pamela know and, uh, 
and yeah so and i will give you her email so that you can you can contact her all right uh, i think that that is it i am going to try and get this uploaded tonight <laughs> if you heard mr odin snoring i'm sorry he's really becoming an old man yeah um yeah i'm gonna try and do a little bit of uh stitching on my reflections of canada tonight and uh think about which mira to work on for mira monday stitching so with that thank you so much for watching and um continue staying safe and healthy and uh I hope you all have a really great couple of weeks and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Until then.